Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering gonococcal infections. Before I get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please help support me and support this channel. How can you do that? Like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and don't forget I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's get started. Uh, gonococcal infections, take a look. So it says gonorrhea, it can be transmitted by exposure to sexual fluids during, vag during vaginal, anal, oral sex, but ejaculation does not have to occur for gonorrhea to be transmitted. Guess what? Aren't these the same things we saw with chlamydia? Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, usually when you test for gonorrhea, you test for chlamydia at the same time. And when you test for chlamydia, you test for gonorrhea at the same time because it's very common that uh, patients who are infected with one are usually infected with the other. So that's something important to know. Something else that we'll see in gonorrhea, that is the same thing for chlamydia. Take a look. Infection confers no immunities to subsequent infections. So it's not like, for example, if you get chicken pox, you'll never get chicken pox again. You're immune to chicken pox. That's not the case. You can get gonorrhea that you, you know, you're given an antibiotic to get rid of it. But guess what? You can get reinfected over and over and over again. Again, same thing as chlamydia. Now let's look at the clinical manifestations. Now the clinical manifestations, this is different than chlamydia. So pay attention. The most common symptoms of gonococcal urethritis among men are dysuria, purulent urethral discharge, or epididymitis. Now, here's the thing, guys. Um, usually with women, when they get um, gonorrhea, they're usually asymptomatic. The ones who do have symptoms, and obviously they'll, you know, they'll go see their healthcare provider, they'll get tested, and they'll find out they have gonorrhea. But for women, usually for females, asymptomatic. We usually see these symptoms in men and those symptoms are pronounced. Okay. But now for women, when they do have symptoms for women, common symptoms are increased vaginal discharge, dysuria, frequency of urination or bleeding after sex. None of these are normal. Often redness and swelling can occur at the cervix or urethra along with again, that purulent drainage, that purulent exudate. Complications of gonorrhea. The complication that can occur uh, in men is epididymitis, which can end up causing them to be um, sterile and fertile, right? Untreated gonorrhea in women can cause infection in the Bartholin's glands that's located internally on either side of um, the, that vaginal opening. And it can result in PID. As you guys learned when I did the video about chlamydia, PID can cause ectopic pregnancies and can even le lead to infertility. And it's very, very painful. Neonates, they can develop gonococcal conjunctivitis. Um, that's from exposure to an infected mother during delivery. And that's why um, if mom does have not even if all all of the babies actually get it almost in every single state um they get that antibiotic that's placed in the eye and so let me just actually make a, a correction with that in almost every single state um it's mandated that the child get that um antibiotic ointment in the eye if the mother is infected if she's infected or has a history of infection. So let me make that correction. Let's take a look at the diagnostic studies for gonorrhea. For men, look at this, guys. A presumptive diagnosis of gonorrhea. So we haven't even tested them yet. We are going to assume that they have it. If they have a history of sexual contact with a new or infected partner, within a few days of having what? Urethral discharge. We are going to assume that they have gonorrhea and we expect them uh, to be treated with such, all right? As with chlamydia infection, the NAAT, that's a test that's used for detecting gonorrhea, same as um, as chlamydia, and a culture can also be used. But like I said, usually they will test, um, they'll use the NAAT or they'll, they'll, they'll do the urinalysis for it. Intraprofessional care, look at this. First line, whenever you're studying and you see first line, you see cornerstone, it's important, make sure you know it. The first line treatment for gonorrhea is um, given IM with oral azithromycin. 
as with trick, all sexual infection uh, contacts of the patients with gonorrhea should be evaluated and treated to prevent reinfection and further transmission. So we do need to know who those sexual partners are. They do need to be treated. And something else I want to uh, say to you guys, this is also has to be reported to the state, your mandated reporter. So usually what happens, once you're tested, that lab that you use to test, they will report that to the state for you. It's not something you have to do, but it's something that you need to know must be reported to the state. All sexual partners within 60 days abstain from sexual intercourse during and one week after treatment. So all sexual partners of this infected person within, if they've had that sexual contact within 60 days, two months, they have to abstain from sex, sex during treatment and for a whole week after treatment, just like chlamydia during treatment and the whole week after treatment, abstain from sexual activity. You're going to, with the patient, you're going to review the ways to reduce the risk of acquiring a repeat or new STI in the future. So you're going to teach that patient about barrier um, methods, barrier contraceptives, such as condoms. Now, take a look at the gender difference for gender differences for sexually transmitted infections for men. Syphilis is more commonly, especially in men who have sex with men. They're more likely to have symptoms, and those symptoms tend to be more pronounced than in women. Chlamydial infections results in fewer complications. They're um, easier to diagnose because of less complex anatomy, because with the male, right, that penis is just straight, right, and it's very short, like a less complex uh, anatomy. And they're less likely to seek medical care. And that's true. The men are not going to seek medical. No, let me tell you something. One of the few times that you will see the men quick to seek medical care is when something's wrong down there, right? Otherwise, they don't want to go to the healthcare provider. But when they have those symptoms, such as that purulent discharge, things like that, they're more likely to go uh, to the healthcare provider. And another correction I want to make, um, even though the anatomy of the male is less complex, when I said shorter, I was not talking about... Um, the, the urethra, because the urethra is actually, for the women, it's more, much shorter than the men. So may, let me make sure I make that correction. Now, let's take a look at women. The anatomy increases the risk for STIs. A chlamydia infection is three times more likely in women than in men. Gonorrhea, trick, and um, herpes two is more common. Remember, guys, you have your herpes type one, herpes virus type one, and your herpes virus type two. Type one is above the belt. That's the one you normally see around the mouth. That's your cold sore. And type two is the one you get below the belt. That's the one you normally see in the genital area. HPV, that's your herpes um, virus, is most common STI in women. They have more frequent serious complications related to STIs. And um, NCLEX expects you to know what these complications are. So make sure you guys pay attention. I don't see where my highlighter is, but make sure you guys know this. PID, that pelvic inflammatory disease. Infertility, ectopic pregnancy, untreated syphilis. By the way, untreated syphilis can do what? Kill you. Um, untreated syphilis in pregnant women, that can result in infant death. Heck, it can even... Inf a result in the woman's death if she doesn't get treatment and it's severe enough. So guys, that is the video for gonorrhea. Please, as always in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you would like to see me cover next or in the future. I plan on making these STIs a series. I plan on covering all of the STIs, including HIV. So look forward to that. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And almost daily, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.